Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about antidiuretic hormone, which is also called vasopressin. Um, so in this video, I'm going to talk about where and why ADH is released, uh, the effects of ADH, ADH action in the kidneys. So I'll go over the physiology of what's taking place in the kidneys. Uh, and then I'll talk about how does alcohol affect ADH? And then finally, diabetes insipidus. Um, so where and why is ADH released? So it is produced in the hypothalamus and secreted by the posterior pituitary gland. Uh, so it's a rare hormone where it's produced in one place, but then stored and secreted in another place. Um, it is stimulated by dehydration. So that is the main thing that causes secretion of ADH. Um, so there are osmoreceptors, those are sensory receptors in the hypothalamus that are monitoring your blood osmotic pressure. Um, so essentially, they're detecting how much draw is there uh, from the blood on those cells to try and suck the water out of the cell, essentially. Um, so osmotic pressure is generated when there's an imbalance in the concentration of solutes bit on two sides with a membrane separating the two. So in this case, we're talking about the blood and the, the uh, cellular fluid inside the osmoreceptors. So if the blood has a higher concentration of solutes, that's going to draw fluid from the osmoreceptors across that membrane. So it's going to kind of suck the water out because we're aiming for equilibrium. So that water is going to travel across the cell membrane and into the blood because we're trying to make an equal amount of concentration of solutes on either side of that membrane. If there's a lower solute concentration in blood, meaning there's more volume of water and it's less concentrated, then it doesn't draw the water out of the cell because it's more balanced, it's more equal. So when there's a high solute concentration in the blood, that means not enough water in the blood. It's more viscous or it's a higher concentration of stuff. And so it's drawing the water out of the osmoreceptors and that triggers the osmoreceptors. Those are sensory receptors that are detecting that draw, that osmotic pressure. And we interpret that to mean dehydration um, because if we're properly hydrated, then we don't have that draw from the blood on those osmoreceptors. Um, so when we detect that we are dehydrated, so the osmoreceptors are triggered, um, then we secrete ADH because it helps us retain more water and kind of work against dehydration. Uh, ADH stim or can also be stimulated by pain, stress, trauma, anxiety, nicotine, and other substances. Um, so there are other things that can cause you to retain more water, even if it's above and beyond what you actually need, because in that case, it's not because of dehydration, it's because of some other phenomenon taking place that's causing you to retain more water. Uh, so the effects of ADH, in total, the goal of ADH is to help your body retain more water so you can increase your overall water volume. Um, and then also it helps you regulate your blood pressure because the assumption is that if you're dehydrated, that means you have a smaller quantity of blood and therefore you need to vasoconstrict the vessels to be able to maintain blood pressure even with not enough blood. So it does both things. It works on increasing your water volume by retaining more water, um, but then also vasoconstricting blood vessels to increase blood pressure. So it increases water volume, mostly by causing the kidneys to retain water. So you're losing less through urine, um, but it also decreases the water that's lost through sweating. Um, if we have no ADH secretion going on, then we will actually produce 10, more, 10 times more urine than normal. Um, so it'll be large amounts of dilute urine. And if that isn't corrected, the person could actually die in a matter of days if they're not replacing that water quickly enough and uh, if they don't have the ADH required to um, retain that water that they're taking in. All right, so the action on the kidneys, so the physiology of what is actually taking place. Um, so tubular reabsorption is one of the processes that's taking place in the nephron of the kidneys. 
So we filter the fluid out of the blood, and then we've got that filtrate that goes through our system of tubules, and we're secreting things into it to get rid of for as part of the urine. But an important thing that happens here is tubular reabsorption, where we're reabsorbing almost all of the liquid that we filtered out as we're, we're combing through the blood to get rid of what we don't want. So we need to reabsorb like 99% of that water. We only leave enough water to be able to dissolve the things that we want to carry out. And that goes out as urine. So in a healthy, normal person with an adequate amount of ADH, you are retaining about 99% of that water and 1% is going out as urine. Um, so ADH is necessary to make the renal tubules permeable to water. If there's no ADH present, then the filtrate, the liquid that we're filtering out from the blood just passes through the system of tubules and doesn't get reabsorbed. So what that means is all of the blood that we're filtering, we're just losing that water. So large amounts of dilute urine um, instead of reabsorbing it and retaining that water. So low ADH means low reabsorption and high volume of urine. So the way that it actually works is kind of cool. Uh, when we secrete ADH, the ADH acts on the cells that line these tubules. So if we zoom in, here are cells that are lining the tubules. Now those cells have these little protein water channels that are contained inside the cell. They have to be inserted into the plasma membrane like we see here to be able to allow the water that's inside the tubule to flow into the cell through the other side and to get taken back up into the blood. They're sort of like, you could just think of them like little straws that are drawing the water across from the filtrate going through the tubule, draws the water into the cell and through to the other side where it can then be taken up into the blood. So those little straws live inside those tubule cells, but ADH, is the trigger that causes the cells to put those proteins in their cell membranes to allow the water to pass through so that it can be reabsorbed. No ADH means that those little straws just stay right inside of those cells and don't get inserted into the plasma membrane. So now we don't have any straws to draw the water across. So no ADH means no water channels available to bring that water back through. All right, so how does alcohol affect ADH? Alcohol inhibits secretion of ADH. So the more alcohol in the body, the less ADH we are secreting. Uh, it leads to extreme dehydration, depending on how much alcohol someone is consuming. Um, and that's a big part of the hangover that people frequently experience the next day. It's not the whole thing. I mean, there's a lot more to a hangover than just the dehydration because there's the toxicity, um, there's the withdrawal. So there's other aspects that contribute to a hangover. But the dehydration is a considerable part of the discomfort that someone would experience the next day. Um, so even if you are drinking water while you're drinking alcohol, like let's say somebody's out for a night of drinking and they're alternating alcoholic drink water, alcoholic drink water, that sort of thing, um, it will help in certain senses, like it will dilute the alcohol and the, the chemicals that are in the alcohol and how it's affecting your body and it will slow down consumption. So maybe overall consumption of alcohol will be less. Uh, but it's not going to be effective for rehydrating and avoiding that dehydration aspect of the hangover the next day, um, because as long as there's enough alcohol in the system, it's suppressing ADH. Um, so the key is, as the alcohol is leaving the system, to increase the water, because as alcohol goes down, ADH goes up, and then at that point, you're able to retain the water that you're taking in. Um, let's see here. Okay, finally, diabetes insipidus. So this is a rare endocrine disorder. Uh, it's only in one in every 25,000 people or so. It is completely unrelated to diabetes mellitus, which is the diabetes we all know about. It's our blood sugar regulation disorder. Um, so it is completely separate and unrelated. Uh, it can develop at any age. So someone isn't necessarily born with it. It can happen later in life. Um, and there are two types. 
So diabetes insipidus means that we have a problem with our ADH. So either we're not producing enough of it. So that would be cranial diabetes insipidus. We're not producing enough. And it could be very mild, like maybe just not quite enough. Or it could be severe, like none at all. Um, and then the other type is that maybe you're producing plenty of ADH, but the kidneys aren't responding to it. They're not sensitive enough to the diabetes or to the uh, ADH. So um, the first type, if we're not producing enough, if it's mild, it might just be a matter of drinking more water to keep up with the fact that you are losing more water than you should be. If it's mild, you could probably drink water and make up for it. If it's more severe, then there is a medication that can be taken to replace the effects of ADH. Um, it's not exactly a synthetic form of ADH, but it's a medication that has similar effects. Um, so it's easily treated with medications. Um, so the cranial form, so you're not producing enough, it can be caused by damage to the hypothalamus or the pituitary gland. Uh, so it could be like infection, operation, tumor, anything else that can cause harm or damage. Um, but in one in three cases, there's no obvious cause. So there was no history of any of those things and it just kind of happened spontaneously. Um, in the nephrogenic form, so where the kidneys aren't responding to ADH, uh, can be inherited or it can be caused by some form of kidney damage. Um, and it could also be caused by certain medications, like especially lithium. Um, and so again, same thing, if it's a mild case, then you might just need to drink more water and that might be enough to make up for it. Um, but in more severe cases, uh, then there are also medications that can uh, reduce urine output. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.